Welcome to this short video on the role of stress in bladder disease in the cat. How common is bladder disease? So that's cystitis. Well, it's actually very common in cats. And certainly in cats that live in cities, it can be up to 10% of our cats are affected. So that's a really significant problem. And if you look at the type of cats that develop bladder disease, um, it's quite an interesting profile because they are young to middle-aged cats. Whereas with humans and dogs, you tend to get more bladder disease, more cystitis when you're older. But with cats, it's young to middle-aged, um, particularly uh, can be black and white cats, which is very interesting. We've got a nice picture of black and white cat here for you. Moggies, so that's crossbred cats, but Persians are predisposed as well. They tend to be overweight, and that's a significant player. And we're going to talk about that more with stress in cats. And equally affects male cats and female cats, but male cats can actually get a complete obstruction, so they can't urinate at all, and that's a life-threatening disease. That can actually kill them if you don't get it mended straight away. And their environment is important as well. These tend to be cats that live inside in a multi-cat environment, um, and particularly they eat dry food and have litter boxes. So that's the profile of the type of cats we're thinking about. So what does this look like? Well, these are cats, they're, they've got cystitis, they've got bladder pain. So they cry on urination, they go to the loo a lot, so maybe they're straining, sometimes they, they can't urinate at all. There may be blood in the urine. Um, but you can also see them in, a, in urinating where they shouldn't. So if they've got a litter box, instead of using the litter box, they'll maybe go behind the television or go upstairs or something like that. Um, they can over-groom themselves, and that's particularly their tummy and between their legs, uh, their hind legs. It's because their bladder is sore, and that's the best way of a cat to try and give their tummy a rub. They may become rather grumpy and show behavioural changes. So that you might see as them hiding or being uh, more aggressive with their, their fellow housemates. And it tends to be episodic, it tends to wax and wane as things change in the house. What causes cystitis in the cat? Well, it's really a fascinating condition and it's not quite what you'd expect because actually um, most of it occurs in cats that are less than 10 and 75% of it is actually relating to stress, which shows you just how important stress is. So on the slide I've written FIC, that's feline idiopathic cystitis. In truth that means we don't know 100% what causes it. But um, it is very much stress-related, and it's very similar to a condition in humans called fe um, feline, no, human interstitial cystitis. And again, in humans, very stress-related disorder. And if we combine that with urethral plugs, which is where little bits of protein and sandy stuff from the urine get stuck in the urethra, that's the tube that goes from the bladder to the outside, then those together, say, form 75% of cats presenting with signs of cystitis. So stress is so important. There are other causes. So certainly um, bladder stones can occur in about 20% of cases. But infections are very rare. Cats have very concentrated urine. So less than 5% of cats presenting with signs of cystitis have actually got bacteria in their urine. If we look at cats older than 10, where we don't see that much cystitis, it's a very different picture. In fact, about 50% of those will have bacteria. And that's because they've got other diseases. They have diabetes, they have an overactive thyroid gland, or they have kidney disease. And it's because of those diseases that they're predisposed to the um, infection. And one group of cats it's worth looking a little bit closer at. These are the cats that have actually obstructed, so they cannot urinate at all. This is a life-threatening condition. So if it's, not, if it's not corrected, the cat will be dead within three days. Very, very serious. And with these, 90% are caused by stress. 90%. That is incredibly important. So that stress can really result in death. It will kill these cats. And in fact, even if they don't block, we find some of the cats who've got the idiopathic cystitis, with time, that inflammation of their bladder, the bladder wall gets thicker and thicker, and ultimately that can become cancer. And again, that's going to kill them. So it really underlines just how important stress is to cats. Why these cats are stressed? Well, it's about being that particular cat in that particular environment. So some cats are much more easily stressed than others. It might be their genetics, it might be something that happened when they were tiny kittens and it set that pattern to continue. 
Um, then you've got the environment. And so if you put that cat that's naturally a very stressy cat in an environment that's nice and stable and secure, he's going to be fine. But in a big multi-cat household where he can't control his environment, he's going to develop stress. So multi-cat households are the most important. And it's not just the fact that there are lots of cats. That's a major point. But it's many cats, but at least one that our cat with cystitis doesn't get on with. And if you've got to live with somebody you really don't like long term, that is a problem. Also significant changes in the environment. So maybe they're not fed at the same time every day. Maybe the food keeps changing. Maybe you, anything else can keep changing. The litter box where it's placed keeps changing. All that sort of thing. Going into a cattery can be very stressful. Certainly we know moving home is very stressful. Anything that's very noisy over a long period of time can be a problem for these cats. And occasionally we do see separation anxiety. So that's where you've got a fragile cat who's in a one cat household, very, very bonded to his owner, and his owner goes away or shift patterns change and the cat can get very stressed and develop cystitis. So we're talking more chronic stress, not a one-off acute stress, more chronic stress. And so what happens to these cats, these cats that can't handle stress? Well, they've got a heightened sense of anxiety. They're really worried. But what's really interesting is because they've been stressed for so long, their adrenal glands shut down. Your adrenal glands make adrenaline and cortisol. They're the hormones that allow us to have fight or fight reflexes, so to run away or to fight back. And so with these cats, their adrenal glands have actually shut down. They can't run away. They can't fight back. So what they do, they freeze, terrified, absolutely terrified, but they don't respond to their environment. Or they do what we call faffing or fiddling about. They develop displacement activity. So that might be eating. These are often stress eater cats, which is why they tend to get obese. And that in itself is a problem because you don't tend to urinate as effectively when you've got a whole load of extra fat in your abdomen. They may also do stress grooming, and I've already said these cats tend to overgroom, particularly around their abdomen. But they can also do um, stress urination is part of the whole pattern. So a very uh, displacement activity driven lifestyle, but they don't control their environment and that's the real problem for them. So what is the prognosis for a cat that develops stress bladder? Well, if you can change the environment, if you can de-stress the cat, and you can settle everything down, changing the diet will help as well, you can make these cats fine. Sometimes it's drastic, you actually have to rehome them to a house which doesn't have any other cats. But we'll talk about um, things you can do within your household in the other video. But if you can't de-stress their lifestyle, if you can't change their diet onto one that's more appropriate, then it will keep going and you've got a 50% chance it will recur. And then if it does, that ultimately it's going to kill them, either because they obstruct and hence that can be fatal, or because it's just too difficult to live with a cat that's permanently stressed and urinating around the house. And they're very upset cats. So it's vitally important that you do de-stress these cats' lives. It's not a condition we can cure. The problem is actually in the cat's head. It's how it faces the world. But it's these cats show their stress by what's happening in their bladder. So we need to address the management, which is the other, vi other video. We need to think about their diet, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then there are some auxiliary things that can help. One is antispasmodics. These take away the spasm that occurs in the bladder and the spasm that occurs in the urethra, that tube from the bladder to the outside. And so that can really help. And that can help in male cats and female cats. Some cats may benefit from gag replacement. This is uh, the sticky lining that protects the inside of the bladder from the urine. And um, in very severe cases, people uh, may use tricyclic antidepressants. While I would use those in a very serious situation, I don't like to use them long term. I prefer that we've really got to focus on the environment because just doping the cat isn't addressing what's actually wrong. And that's the stress from its environment. And so you need to monitor the changes. And you, this is a long-term commitment. So if you have a cat with stressed bladder, this is not something there's a quick fix for. You are going to be committed to doing this for the rest of the cat's life. Let's have a little think about water, because I mentioned changing the diet. And to be honest, what you're trying to do is make the urine less concentrated. If the urine isn't so concentrated, it doesn't stimulate that painful bladder. And you can take away the pain of the cystitis. 
The diet change on its own or getting them to drink more on its own will not cure the cat, but it can reduce the clinical signs. And when you put that with the environmental change, that makes all the difference. So ideally, wet food rather than dry food. But if you've got a cat that absolutely will not touch um, wet food, then you can do other things to encourage the cat to drink, and there are special prescription diets that can be used. They are more expensive than normal cat food, but they are specifically designed to make the urine less concentrated. So make sure there are enough water bowls for the cats. If the cat likes running water, let it have running water. Obviously, you don't want to flood your house. Um, adding tuna ice cubes to water bowls, all sorts of things like that. So try and get these cats to drink more. And whatever it is that you find within the environmental changes, etc., that helps the cat, you're going to need to monitor long term. So all the things that we talk about in the other video, so um, extra love and cuddles, making sure all the key resources are there, you've got to do all of that too. And then if the cat is much calmer when the feely way is plugged in, then if the owner notices the cat's now starting to overgroom their tummy again, check and make sure you don't need to plug a new feely way in. That one's just run out. If it's a cat that does get stressed by the other cats, is it that you forgot and you've been giving it its dinner beside the other cats and it's got stressed? Is it that the litter box hygiene isn't as good as it's been and it, that's stressing out the cat? If it's a cat that responds to gag supplements or antispasmodics, does it need another course? So the drugs we tend to use as short courses, whereas the diet and all the environmental stuff, that needs to be long term. And if owners are proactive, that can really help. And if you notice on this um, slide, I've got a mention about Cat Professional. There's a little book that Sarah Caney and I wrote a few years ago on there, and it's designed for owners who've got cats with stress bladder, and it helps them go through all the environmental changes in a little bit more detail. So that can be very helpful. All the things that you do to address the idiopathic cystitis then come into play at that point. So really the, the, the background on this and the take home message is that stress bladder, idiopathic cystitis, is so common as a cause of bladder disease in the cat. 90% of your obstructed cases, 75% of your unobstructed cases, so you really do need to focus on that and get the owners to understand just how important de-stressing their cat is going to be.